Mike, we got a couple questions about how to apply epoxy resin over stain. And I thought you'd be the best person to talk to about this. So what's your thoughts? What, how should we approach that? Yeah, I'd certainly be happy to help. Um, as far as, you know, best practices uh, with using stain underneath an epoxy project, we typically recommend using a water-based stain. Uh, that being said, you could try oil-based stains, but then we recommend a testing for compatibility. How do we uh, do test- that? Like yeah, it's, 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 for compatibility is, it's pretty simple. It's just a matter, but a little time consuming. You want to put, you know, just grab a test piece of wood, apply your oil-based stain, let it dry for a day. Go back, apply your epoxy over top of your stain, let that dry for a day. Then go with just a, a utility knife and score in a deep tic-tac-toe image on your board. Then mm-hmm. take some duct tape, put it over your squares and peel the duct tape back. If any of those squares cleanly pop away from the stained test piece, then you know that the epoxy is not, for whatever reason, getting through that oil-based stain. So it's just kind of floating on the top of it. Now, some issues that I've had in the past when I've done the oil stain and I've tried to put epoxy on it, the I'll get like an orange peel or a fish eye. So should I do like a seal coat, you know, like thin out tabletop or something like that with denatured alcohol? And then do a quick seal coat, let that set up, scuff that up, wash it down with the nature alcohol, then do a flood coat. Or what's your thoughts? Like, do I have to do like, are you talking about the seal coat for the tic-tac-toe test, like the hatch test, or is that? Yeah, I'm really just talking just general compatibility. You know, is this the epo- is epoxy in general, even sticking to this stain? And if you're getting any adhesion at all, then it's kind of a good signal to just go forward with yeah, first a seal coat. You know, we definitely recommend sealing. And like you said, sometimes you can put a seal coat down and it could look a little rough where yeah. you've got off gassing coming from the wood or you have orange peel over top of some oil-based stain or some contaminants or fish eyes. Mm-hmm. And even that's not a deal breaker as long as it's not flaking off. You could just yeah. go and, uh, scuff sand that surface with some 180 to 220 grit sandpaper or even lower, you could go 180 to 120. Get a really and high grid or low grid oil. Wipe yeah. that down with a clean cotton t-shirt rag and some denatured alcohol, and then put another seal coat if you need to. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for people to be putting, you know, one, two, maybe even three seal coats on a, on a piece until you can sand those seal coats down, get a nice flat surface before your final flood coat. I gotcha. Now, is there anything in like the tabletop that could affect the color of the stain solvent wise or something like that? Nope, tabletop is a solvent-free system, so it shouldn't really affect the color of the stain. The only changing color you're gonna have is just that you know dry versus wet look, like you would be applying epoxy over top of dry wood. It's gonna it's gonna deepen the color. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and as far as going, um, you know, stepping back towards the seal coating, you'd mentioned you know diluting that down with denatured alcohol. Uh, yeah, you know, that's that, that's a great way to do your first seal coat, especially over top of bare wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I recommend blending the resin hardener together first and then mixing in roughly 5% denatured alcohol yeah. to, you know, thin it down and you're going to get a little bit better penetrating power on that first coat. Plus, it'll just go a little bit further and uh, you want to use denatured and not isopropyl. Isopropyl alcohol has a higher water content and it's you know, water. All right, isopropyl is rubbing alcohol. So stay away from rubbing alcohol, use denatured alcohol. Yep, you got it. Now there's like places like California, you can't get denatured alcohol anymore. Is there a substitute for that or? You could use acetone, you know, any oil, oil-free oil solvent, you know, stay away from mineral spirits. Okay, okay. Well, thanks Mike, I think that's gonna work. We'll give it, we'll give it a run. I'll touch base with you.
Yeah. We can run through the conversation again. You know, that's fine. I fired it back up, so it's recording right now. Um, yeah, it's like the staining, it's just always, you know, water-based first if you can. I know some people don't like water-based because they don't like the colors or the or even the selection. You, you know, know you get like a blotchiness to it, too. Oil just applies nicer. You know, you get a more right. uniform color. So there's like a, a water-based um, conditioner. And I wonder, I've never tried that with epoxy over it. I wonder if that changes anything. I've tried conditioners just on general, you know, staining, you know, home trim mm -hmm. um, and haven't noticed a huge difference with the compatibility of, you know, a polyurethane top coat. So I don't think a conditioner is really going to hurt anything. I, yeah. I it's never, nothing I've ever recommended. Okay. Um, I would certainly stay away from um, gel stains, you know, oh, really I would definitely that. leave a, a, a thicker residue. You know, you can almost build those up. Um, as like a paint if you're not careful. So I would stick away from gel, stay away from gel stains. Yeah, I never would have thought that. Yeah, they're so easy to apply and you get really uniform coverage, but you're right. If you don't wipe it back off, yep. it will have a big build. Um, now, I remember, this is, we're going in our time machine here. I remember the uh, the table that you did, those construct or the uh, concrete forms, and those had, been witnessed to and subjected to more abuse and more uh, chemicals, components, everything that was on there. Uh, and you got epoxy to stick to that. What did, what did you do for those that got that to really adhere? Yeah, those were kind of a worst case scenario. Um, just, you know, decades old uh, cement concrete pore forms that had been, you know, treated over and over and over again with industrial release Mm -hmm. And all we, all we did, you know, and this is a testament to just how well tabletop works is just uh, we went and gave everything a really good wipe down. So, you know, just again, clean cotton t-shirt rag and, you know, denatured alcohol or acetone, yeah. give a really good wipe. And then we just thinned down our tabletop um, with, you know, 5% denatured alcohol, applied a seal coat, came back the next day, made sure it wasn't flaking off. It wasn't, but it looked horrible. And then we sanded, applied another seal coat. We did three seal coats. And then um, we were able to do, I was able to do a consistent sand with just some, you know, pretty rough 120, 80 grit sandpaper to get a consistent surface before that That's final. Do the flood coat on. Well, that makes complete sense. So it's nothing, it wasn't anything fancy. It was just, you know, is it sticking at all? Yes. Okay. Then just keep sealing it until you get, a, you know, a, uh, an even coverage. Yeah. So we can't really wash down the oil-based stain with denatured alcohol. That's going to that's going to lift the stain because it's solvent, right? So like how you wash down the concrete forms, that was okay, but the stain would come up if we washed it down, or at least some of it, if it wasn't fully dry. Yeah. I mean, making sure your stain is fully dry is going to be, you know, critical, um, you know, more so than what they recommend on just the instructions on the back of the stain. So don't, don't wait two hours, wait two days or three days. Yeah. Cause the one I got, it says it's dry in an hour and you know, yeah. it, <laughs> I would wait longer. <laughs> Okay. All right. And then you could test it, you know, is it dry? I don't know. Take a clean, just white rag, wipe the surface. Is the rag coming up clean? Um, I don't think there's, um, you know, a huge issue with taking, you know, a, a little bit of a solvent, like again, denatured alcohol is the one to keep going back to, but yeah. um, lightly soaking a rag and then wiping your surface down, um, you know, after you know, three days of drying, I don't think you're going to be having any huge issues with lifting the stain totally out of the wood. Yeah. I mean, you get a, maybe a little bit of color change, but that's still going to have the color that you stain. Right. So that makes sense. I think you'd be fine as long as you let it dry for a few days, you take a clean rag, a white clean rag, rub it on the surface. Nothing's coming off. Move on to the seals, the, the seal coat. Ready to go. Well, thanks, Mike. We'll give that a hell of a run. I can't say hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Mike. We'll give that a run. I think it's uh, we get some solid information here and see what happens. Okay, great. Yeah, happy to help. And, uh, you know, if you guys have any other questions, just feel free to contact us and good luck with the projects. Thanks, man. I appreciate it.